we have got a wonderful night planned tonight. We're excited about this. We had a wonderful time at prayer tonight before service. It is good, and God is good all the time. Amen. Now, some of you keep up on Julie Green and what's happening with her. Well, we want to share something. Didi, just come up here and, and so you can face the people and do the best you can to read Christina's notes because it is delicious. It's Christina's notes, but we can get it, okay? Yeah. So you can get it. Well, that's okay. There we go. She's on to this thing. That's okay. That's all right. It, this is Julie Green. And what it is about, it says there's going to be a great She's a prophetess. She's a, She's a prophet. Prop and it, this was for May 8th. So it says the war or soul of, we are warring for the soul of this nation. And it is coming to an end. And what she is saying in here is she is telling us for so long we have been doing what we want. We have been trying to do it ourselves. Yeah. But we're not going to do that anymore. She said now we are going to trust in the Lord. We are going to move the darkness out. And she said in our country there is so much despair that you, you don't even want to search for the light because you think it's so hopeless, but it is not. And it says, children, you need to look for me. I, he, she said, you thought I would pick and choose who would live and die, who would be healed and not healed. But that's not the way I am. My children, we are a body. Believe these things, what I am about to tell you. It says, don't believe the lies anymore. Don't believe the devil. And it said in, the, in my word, you would need to have ears to hear. And I'm not sure what that is. That should, Truth will be let go. I told you that, you that I am sitting in the heavens and I am laughing. And I am stepping in. And these walls are coming down. Amen. 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 So what she is saying is, this is my time. I am going to bring judgment and strife on these people. You, that you do not need to be in despair anymore. And let me see what's on the back of here. I think this was for the church. Uh, a great mighty war is happening the soul, for the souls of this nation. So stand Get up, get up, and, and pray. Get out of the darkness. Get out of despair. Tell the systems. You have to tell the systems. You have to tell the circumstances to get out. Tell sickness to get out. Tell negative bank accounts to get out. To tell unrest in the church to get out. Tell the darkness to get out. The depression, the recession. And what she is saying also is she, that my glory, my anointed, my people need to know now that I will show up, I will show out, and my word will happen. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Dee Dee. We know that there is a lot of things happening, and it's for our good mm -hmm. and for God's glory. But that's what we need to be calling in. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Amen. Thy kingdom come. That's what Jesus prayed with his disciples, teaching him that I am going to take your sins. I'm going to hang on the cross. I'm going to go under the earth into hell, but I'm going to rise up, and when I come back, the kingdom will be here because I will give you a comforter, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost that will lead and guide you into all truth. Now, when, when it was said at one point, Julie said, we've done things our way. Mm -hmm. Now it's got to change because we don't want to be left behind. This stuff is serious. People don't realize how serious. This is. And so we have to teach our children, our children's children. When, the, when God has shown me things, like last Wednesday night, I said I almost felt like I was begging people, you know, 
but that was God, you know, because he's mm-hmm. saying, get on the wagon, get on this bus, because it's going yes. somewhere. Amen. And all your plans are null and void, because he needs you to go out and to share the word with other people. Amen. Because there's a lot of people that are, are just laying there, don't believe this is happening. Don't believe that this kingdom, they're, they're saying, oh, God's going to come and take us out of there. It's, no, we are supposed to be coming against the devil yes. and pushing him back and bringing in the light of Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's what we're doing now. Yeah. And it's getting more exciting. Okay, so now we're going to pray and we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm going to start at verse 4. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Paul praying for the Ephesians. We know that Ephesus was a very wicked place, very bad place, okay? And the Mother Mary was here in this land as well. So, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to his riches and glory, that you would be strengthened with might ooh, by his spirit in his inner man. We need, God wants us to pray these things so we become strong. Amen. Mm-hmm. We're going to have more fun watching people grow legs, rise up, when Jesus went into, Mar- into Peter's house, what was Peter's mother doing? She was sick. It was a, a, a sickness that she should have died from. Do you realize that? Mm-hmm. But Jesus touched her, and she rose up and fixed their meal. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But, and when Julie Green spoke this here, and today she was talking on fear and depression. I know what that's about. I've been there. Um, But now we have to be ready on our game plan. So he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be given unto you. Mm -hmm. So if you're wrestling to make things happen in any area of your life, you are operating in fear. Don't do that because it comes easily. Right? It comes easily. So, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that we would be rooted and grounded in love, love, that we may be able to do what? Comprehend Comprehend with all the saints. (gasps) What is the what? Breath Breath and life and And death and what? Height. i got to turn my page here. And to know the love of Christ which which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. This is what we need for today. Yes. We do. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, on to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think, according to that power that worketh in us. What power is working in you? I, I um, was it early this morning or yesterday? I woke up. And I was mad at the devil. And I went into that house and I took over. You're going to be translated. You're going to be standing places and you're going to be praying. You think I'm, I'm just making this up? <laughs> well, when it happens to you, and especially our men folks, you're going to go, whoa, oh, it's going to get better than that. Because Paul wanted to be in the time that we're in right now. Amen. All right? This is the... Last season, where we're taking it back. Now, um, now he said, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. That's us. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Now, what I'm going to do tonight, I, I had something else planned, but he changed it up for me, and I said, that's just fine. <laughs> but uh, we're going to do a testimony you remember little Carly, and, and that was Therese's, Therese's daughter, the little girl? Mm-hmm. Well, Carly has two more books out, all right? And I didn't get a, start, a chance to start. Well, I did start it, but she was molested when she was younger. 
So she has not had an easy life, hardly. Okay? We always think, oh boy, you know. But when you hear this testimony again, I want you to take little notes. What kept that couple going? Who did God all put in their path? They didn't know diddly squat about the word or what to do, you guys. It was a late date. So this testimony, it's going to take about 25 minutes, but this testimony has touched more people, as far as I know, than any testimony some, so far from Andrew Womack's ministry that has been shown, because they say, hey, if that baby, they, why not us? Right? So let's read a scripture. Does anybody have the Amplified Classic edition? Philippians 1.28. So go to Philippians 1.28. <clears throat> we're going to do a little something here. Because what we're going to do is we're learning what we should be doing. Anytime you're in a battle, you see yourself win. You see yourself win. You look at that and you spend time in Joshua 1.8, meditating on the word of God and see yourself winning. You can help pull anybody up. Okay, you heard Dee Dee last week. I was able to pull her up, but that was God through me, but I had to know what I was doing, right? Yeah. And I think God has helped so many of us in this way, help each other or that God was able to use me to do that, and I just praise God. But see, God puts that anointing on the, I know, on the pastors, but I can't be afraid to step out and say things. Okay, now, now nobody has the classic, do you? You've got it. Okay, read it. Give, give her a microphone real quick. Take every word and listen to this. Read it real slow. And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. For such consistent, for such cons, constancy, okay, that's a weird word, constancy and fearlessness, will be a clear sign, proof, and seal to them of their impending destruction, but a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation and that from God. So consistency and fearlessness. When you're in a battle, you've got to be consistent. If you let your guard down, you're dead meat. You don't let your guard down, do you? No. Well, can I have fun? When you're in a battle, you're not going to have too much fun by yourself. You're going to have fun watching the hair and the feathers fly from the devil. That's going to be more fun than you could ever imagine. I, I love it when somebody gets born again and I'm talking to them or praying in tongues. It just excites me. So do not, do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated. Now, when we listen to this here, you can see they had to be on their game plan, right? You know, and, and I'm going to brag on God with you, Dee Dee, given that, that testimony. I had to be on my game plan. Yes, one time did I said to her, I'd like to take a baseball bat after him. And we laughed. It broke the moment, you know, because you get, <laughs> you understand. So don't be frightened or intimidated in anything by your what? Opponents and adversaries. Now, when I do theophastics, and I think Allie's already seen this herself, and I'll say, I'll be working with somebody, and, and I'll say, well, what's happening to us? Is it any dark in her room? Yeah, there's a little spot up there. Well, should we get rid of that? Are, are you willing to? Yeah. Well, then say this after me. In the name of Jesus, get out. And they'll go, whoa. I've had that hope happen so much. I said, would it look like a little imp running? Yeah. And it's still, they're just a little imp. They're defeated. They are under your feet. You don't have to worry about them. Right? Well, I want it my way. You've got it your way, and the way is the word of God. That's why your nose wants to be in this word. None of this fear. Oh, 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 none of this. No, you, 
when you're going to fight, when you're going to fight, how do you go? You've got all of your armor on, and when you're doing, you're just, I'm coming after you, Satan, and I'm going to take you out. Oh, no. Sorry about that, Satan. Jesus already took you out. Now get out of my way. Not this timid little, oh, have one of your grandchildren or your children or a good friend of yours and a big old snake wraps themselves around it and you know it's going to choke them to death. What do you do? Oh, I'll run for help. Come back. Oh, you're dead. I couldn't help you, could I? No, you'd have a knife. You'd have a gun. You'd shoot that sucker. You'd shoot it. You know, when we were, when we were out at the tech, you know, with, um, what was it called, with guns, you know, and we were doing that all. Um, could you really shoot somebody? When we were in that bank and things, I had to go home. I had to get that in my mind. Could I do it? And the more I thought about it, and I asked God to open the door, I could. I really could. Did you ever put yourself in a place? I couldn't do that. Oh, yes, you could. Don't, you know, when, it, when it's the enemy, you go after and you take him out. So opponents and adversaries for such cons Okay, and fearlessness. Oh, that just gets me excited. Will be a clear sign, proof, and seal to them and their impending destruction. But a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation and that from God. We have that. See, those are the things that I will take and I will meditate on it and I will look up and I'll get myself in there. Okay, there was another situation that was brought to me yesterday, yesterday. And, and this person's telling me about it and I'm going... And all of a sudden, something rose up inside of me. It just rose up. And the Lord said, don't say anything to her. I can't tell you who it was. I can't tell you, you know. But someday, I will. If God gives me that opportunity to minister in that family, I'll take the sucker out. Listen, when you have went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and you know the person was demon-possessed. And you can see it in their eyes. But you know the one is in you is stronger than the one that is in them. Did you get what I'm saying? You're like, you don't want to mess with me, do you? You don't want to mess with me, do you? Because I'll take you out. You know, I, I kid around with Big Mikey. I could take you. I could take you. I said to my grandsons, Tracy's too, I said, I could take you on. And, and Paxton says, you know what, Grandma, I think you could. And I think you could. I said, yes, I could. Well, when you've got more, more in you of the word and you know your authority, you go after the devil. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, Satan, if I get in that family, there's going to be house cleaning. You understand. Okay, let's play that, please. Because, and take notes so you can um, uh, share the consistency and things that they've done. The, the husband and the wife and the parents, both parents, okay? Because this is delicious. The healing journey of Hannah Teredes begins with a terrible disease called eosinophilic enteropathy. 
It also begins with the journey of an Andrew Womack teaching tape titled, Your New Identity in Christ. Sent to England in 1990, this tape was lost until February 2006, when suddenly it became the key to a whole new life for one very sick little girl. This is Hannah's story. Right from day one, we knew that Hannah was going to be special. Um, she was a child that surprised us um, right from her conception. And um, I, w I was shocked to find out I was expecting a third baby so quickly. I suppose it really started when we realised Hannah was ill and we realised she was seriously ill. She was a funny colour and I didn't say anything to Carly at the time, but I felt uneasy about what she looked like. She used to wake up in the night absolutely screaming in pain and people would say, well, oh, that's just colic. And we had to keep sort of holding her over our lap till she was sick. And it really got quite stressful because as grandparents, we were quite worried about her. She wasn't feeding. She'd take maybe a couple of sucks of her formula and then she would just not be interested. Or she'd, well, she'd drink any, she'd then vomit it straight back up again. She started off um, not taking milk very well. We tried all different types of milks. She'd be constantly waking at night time. She wouldn't settle, and then when she did go to sleep, she'd be waking up, just screwing her legs up in pain. And then out would, would come all the formula that she'd drunk during the day. When we used to babysit her, um, she used to wake up with, with terrific pains. We didn't know what to do. And just to see her to suffer the way she, she, she was at the time, it was, it was heartbreaking. Um, and then when it came to weaning her, she couldn't swallow lumps at all. Um, so we'd have to mash her food down. Um, and this was even when she was like uh, three years old. I remember going to the house and having all these little jars, which always reminded me of little baby food that she was taking. And this went on and uh, nothing seemed to be happening. And um, uh, what is this problem, you know? And, and Carly said to me, you know, it's, uh, they don't know enough about this. This is Hannah's personal child health record. It, re um, it was given to her when she was born and it will carry through until she's five. In it is recorded any um, appointment with a health professional and at each of those occasions they would record her weight and height for her age. As you can see it goes through from 11 days is the first marking there when she came out of the hospital and the last one is three years 11 months. So there's quite a big track record there of um, what she weighed and how she fluctuated in her weight and height for her age. This red line in the centre here would be what an average child should weigh and this red area at the top and at the bottom is like a danger zone. So if the, if the marks fall within those lines then there's a severe problem. Um, as you can see from Hannah's little marks down here, she never quite made it onto the graph. This chart goes from age one up to five. Um, so we can see Hannah's line plotted again across the bottom um, going up and down. And at the age of about three and, a, three and a half, she was about the same size as a nine-month-old baby. Some people were telling me that, um, you know, God wanted a healer, but sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. I was, I was getting all different types of advice, um, some extreme. Some advice was saying, well, maybe you've done something. Maybe this is judgment on you. Um, and I, in my heart, I got to the point where if the Lord wants her to die um, for his glory, then so be it. And that's how, how messed up I was in my, in my thinking, if you like, because I'd had a lot of religious teaching to say that, that God takes um, lives away and, you know, maybe God wants her in heaven more than, he, more than on earth and, and things like that. So eventually, um, we'd had all kind of tests done at the local hospital. They referred us to a, a specialist children's hospital in London. Um, and there she had a camera investigation and they put a camera down her throat when she was asleep under anaesthetic and they, they took some biopsies. And when the biopsies came back, they said that she had a really rare autoimmune disease called eosinophilic enteropathy. Um, now, basically, that has two sides to it. That has, um, on one hand, it's an allergic type reaction. And then mm. on the other hand, she had um, another part of the disease, which was autoimmune based. So her immune system would go into overdrive. Whenever she, she ate something, it would go into overdrive, thinking it was like some sort of foreign invader and attack it. She started um, deteriorating, she started losing weight. She was always very, very small, but now she started losing weight um, and her hair was getting brittle and her, her skin started going like translucent and she, she lost energy. Um, she was uh, toilet trained and she lost that because she just lost so much 
weight and, and, and she, she couldn't really play properly. She didn't have much energy. And it just deteriorated. And I suppose the last six months um, was the worst. She, she really went downhill and they tried several different um, extreme methods. Um, the last one was the, they went to the, the tube directly into her stomach um, to feed her. Actually, we were taking um, the, the boys up to my mum's. She lived a few hours away. She was going to look after them while Hannah went to have her operation to have her tube fitted into her stomach. But they'd got a car that didn't have um, a CD deck in it, only had a tape deck. And she said, Ashley said to me, have you got anything, any resources in your drawer that I could borrow? So I dug some stuff out and I said, well, I've got some real oldie stuff, if you want it, right at the back of the drawer. I said, I don't know if you want to listen to it, though. I said, because your father-in-law got fed up with the accent on this tape that he wouldn't <laughs> listen to it anymore. And we put it in, and, and this, uh, this like, squeaky American accent came out. <laughs> 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 and, um, it was Andrew's tape, Your New Identity in Cry. And when we listened to that tape, it was like all these scriptures just opened up to us. And when I read it for myself, like Psalm 103 and, and, and 1 Peter 2.24, just all them things. By his stripes you were healed. You know, he's the Lord. He, he heals all our diseases or redeems us from the curse. All these things. Sickness was a curse that we'd been redeemed from. All these truths just came flooding out. And it's like that one tape just opened the whole world up to us. God gave us revelation after revelation of, of the true nature of, of his nature, of, of um, who we were in him, of his will about healing. And um, I, went, I went home, my wife and, um, and Hannah was in hospital, I went home and went on the internet and downloaded lots and lots of teaching and God Wants You Well series, all free from Andrew's website, um, and listened to them over and over. And Ashley would download all these teachings onto my MP3 player and I'd, I'd be laying in the hospital bed next to Hannah kind of getting this revelation. Are you listening to this, Hannah? <laughs> you know, God wants you well, you've been healed and we just got to receive it. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I tried sharing this with, with other people, but... They just, they were just kind of didn't really get it. And they were just like, yeah, but you, you've got to be careful because what about those people that, want, that aren't healed? You know, you look around you and not everyone is healed. So how can you say that it's a simple thing? I'm like, yeah, but it is a simple thing. I know the problem isn't with God. And this was a, this was a major breakthrough for us because we started to have confidence in the fact that God's will was to heal our daughter, which up until that point we didn't know. We, did, we wasn't sure whether it was God's will to heal her or not. Now we knew it was God's will to heal her. Uh, we could do something about it. Um, and this coincided with, they, they put the tube in her to feed her. I can remember it as if probably it was yesterday because we went up in this room, it was quite high up. There were three or four beds in there, but Hannah was the only child and it somehow seemed even worse. It made her seem even worse. She, she was so tiny, she was irritable and she was really in a lot of pain. And once they started pulling her about with various blood tests and things, she would just scream. And as a grandparent, I, I, it just broke my heart to see her like that. This is a, a special medical formula. Um, it's very, very expensive. It's about 90, 90 pounds a tin at the time when Hannah was um, using it. It's hypoallergenic. It's just amino acids. And basically, she had this because her body couldn't accept any protein. So the idea is that if we broke the food down into amino acids, um, then it would trick the body into thinking that it wasn't accepting a protein so that it should be able to absorb the nutrition and grow. Um, and we used to use these scales. These are gram scales. And we had to um, measure per gram to an exact amount, the, the amount of formula to water to, to reconstitute the, the powder. Mm -hmm. This was the pump that would pump the formula through the tube and into her stomach. The pump would go, it would be strapped into these straps here, and then a different shape bag would be slotted in here and all strapped in securely. So most of the time, we would slot this bag into a little children's trolley, like a, like a pull-along suitcase on wheels. She was so good with this pack in the back. She used to, I remember she used to carry along, sometimes dragging in the floor, you know. I can just see her there, you know, um, very, very fragile, um, but she still have, well, she's a, she's a lovely 
Larry Ward Chow. Um, so this wasn't treatment. This wasn't going to make her better, but this was going to sustain her. At least she might start putting on weight. So when we first took her home, it was starting to work. Um, but then um, about two days later, I think we took her home on the Friday. By the Sunday, um, she was vomiting again and she was reacting to it and mm -hmm. she was going downhill again. And it was clear that it wasn't working. Just, just to see her, like I say, you know, I'd come away and, and, and my emotions just wanted to, you know, cry out. I was, I was angry, really, I suppose, if the truth be known with the doctors, that they couldn't find the answer to this. We, we've been listening to all these teachings and uh, we just knew that the crunch time was coming, that, that somehow this had to happen, this healing had to happen soon because she was running out of time. At Andrew's teaching, he was the only man I'd heard who was confident that God wanted my daughter healed. No one else I talked to had that confidence. They were all maybe, so, but Andrew said, God wants your daughter well, you know, on his tapes. So I, I wondered if I could, I could meet him. So I went on the internet and um, I looked on his schedule and it had one conference in the UK, because um, it's an American ministry obviously, there's one conference in the UK, so I looked it up, it said the 16th of March. The conference was the next day and I mean that, that blows me away, that, that's just God is so, so good. So um, we, we, we put us straight in the car, we drove up to, uh, to Walsall where the, uh, where the conference was. You can't take your baby out of hospital and take your children out of school and just go to the middle of nowhere to see someone you've never heard, that no one's ever heard of that we knew of anyway, <laughs> and um, to this conference, it's, it's irresponsible, you know? But we said, but just, it was inside, it's like, no, God put everything in place. And, and we, at that point, we were just, we were focused on him, and it didn't matter what people said, we, we were going to go for this. My faith at the time was, if only I could get um, Andrew to pray for her, and it wasn't that I was putting my faith in the man, I was putting my faith in God, I know that, but he was the only man who believed it enough and I wanted to go and see him so he, he, could, you know, he could pray for her. And I knew it was going to be the Lord that's healed her. When we first got there, it was a real struggle because Hannah was particularly sick and we were staying in a motel um, and travelling to the conference every day for the sessions. And we put the boys into the children's ministry. But Hannah was, she was just too sick. She would just lay at our feet in the conference on the floor and she had a little DVD player with headphones. So she'd be listening to the DVD player. Um, until she'd got just too uncomfortable. She'd still be attached to her, her feeding tube. So we was going up to the conference in the view of getting Andrew to pray for her. Um, now, it, the, the opportunity never arose. After each session, there was always a ministry time where Andrew would get, get up and get the students to pray for people. And every time we tried to go forward with Hannah to get her prayed for, because that, that's what we went there for. Something would happen, though. Uh, the children would come early out of children's church, or, or Hannah would start with, she'd get pain, or there'd be a distraction, or one of, one of the boys would be upset about something, or they'd, they didn't do it how they did it the night before, something would happen. And we never got to get at the front. Um, our other two children were in the children's work and was on our own with Hannah, but she was in so much pain, um, she wouldn't stop screaming, she wouldn't stop, stop crying, we couldn't comfort her. She was rolling around on the floor in pain. Now, a lot of the other parents thought, She's having a tantrum, or um, you know, she's just she's just she's just having a, a, a bad day, and she's she's having a tantrum, and, and we were looked on a bit as you know, get get control of her, but there was nothing we could do to console her. We tried everything. We went in the crash room to get away from the auditorium to be a bit quieter, and just the room cleared within seconds of all these sleeping babies. <laughs> I don't know what they must have thought. This was the last day now. Um, she hadn't been prayed for. She was getting worse, and um, I was getting mixed up emotions, and and part of me was feeling. Um, just, just despair and, and I was feeling um, at the end of myself, if you like, with this. And I was thinking, if this doesn't work, then, you know, there's, this, is, this was my last resort, if you like. And, um, and I, I, I didn't give up on God, but I was thinking, maybe we've gone too far, maybe this isn't going to work. We knew that her body was, was rejecting the formula, basically. So um, the time was, was very short. Um, and the time in the conference was very short. And we were, we were thinking... We were just despairing at that point, thinking we've come so far with such high hopes to, to miss it. You know, we, we really thought, have we come this far to nearly miss it? Are we going to go home empty-handed? I had 
really no idea what was wrong with the child. All I knew is she had a backpack on. And when I came into the room and I stepped over her, here's the backpack, here's the child, and here's this tube. Honestly, it was the creepiest thing. It looked like a, a little remote control toy was the child, and this backpack was like this remote. It was awful. It was like this thing was just zapping her. It was supposed to be giving her life. But it was like bondage, absolute bondage. At that point, um, when she was screaming, uh, 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 the lady uh, who came to help us was uh, Leslie Decker. Um, and she worked at the college. We didn't know that at the time. And she was passing through the crash. She didn't just stumble across us by chance. You know, I believe the Lord set that up. And uh, she came in and she, she knew there was something wrong. And uh, she prayed with us. She realized it wasn't just a tantrum. I think, after a while, and uh, we explained to her the situation. And it, that was probably the first time I really cried because up to then I kind of held it all together, you know, but I kind of, I was facing facts that she, she was going to die and I didn't want to face that reality. Um, but I kind of got my emotion, emotion and got my hopes built to such a crescendo that that was like the climax and then... To, have, to feel like that's going to be snatched away, that we're going to go home and our daughter's going to die. I just couldn't go there. I just couldn't, and there was nothing I could do about it. And once I started to cry, I mean, I couldn't stop. <laughs> just like the years, it just came out only one go. Having known Carly now, I know she doesn't cry really easily. You know, this is something, she's, she's one tough cookie. She believes the word and she harnesses those emotions and... And she, she goes the direction that God wants her to go. But there was something happening in her heart right at that moment, a very vulnerable moment. And Leslie was great, and she prayed with us, and she just spoke really good words over us. And then she said she was going to go and get Andrew. And so we were alone for a few minutes. Um, and finally, Hannah just cried herself to sleep in the buggy, and she was calm. Um, she went and asked um, Andrew to come back there, and Andrew and Jamie came in. And it was a real special moment because, um, you know, it wasn't up the front and it wasn't, it wasn't a, a spectacle, it wasn't a, a show or anything. It was in a, a little back uh, crash room and, um, and it was a real humble experience, you know. And, and Andrew just sat down and, it, and his wife was there and, and he, it, he let us just tell him the whole story. He just let us talk to him and tell him how awful it all was and how desperate the situation was and everything that was wrong with her. But our whole medical history just bleh in about two minutes flat. Whoever we told up until that point, whether it was pastors, um, you know, leaders, whoever it was, mature Christians, they would always be horrified and, oh no, and you know, they'd be horrified at how bad it was. Um, but when we told Andrew, he just, he just smiled and said, piece of cake for Jesus. This is a piece of cake for Jesus. And this smile crept across his face and I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> this guy really believes this, doesn't he? You know, and that faith on the inside of us rose up. So Father, Jamie and I just agree, and we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, Hannah has already been healed. We believe that she's going to be able to eat and gain weight and become totally normal. You know, Andrew doesn't go into these long, lengthy ordeals. He's the same as when he prayed for me and I received my healing back in 2001. He's the same... Today, 2007, it doesn't matter. He's still the same. He gets straight to the point with his prayer. Um, and then we were kind of left with a, a bit of a dilemma. Like, what do we do now? She was asleep in the buggy at that time. Um, so she was asleep throughout him praying for her. Now, when she woke up, the first thing we said to her when she woke up was, Jesus has healed you. And um, she, as soon as she heard that, she smiled. She said, I want to eat. And I'm like... Yeah, now you can eat. She, she, I said to her, so what do you want to eat? She goes, I want some lunch. I want to go to McDonald's. So um, I went and got my boys. I told them, I said, Jesus healed Hannah. And they took it in their stride. They just said, that's great. Now she can eat. In the meantime, we were driving around in a strange city looking for McDonald's. And you'd think there'd be a McDonald's in every city. And uh, we couldn't find it. So we ended up at this KFC. And she said, oh, KFC will do just fine. <laughs> so, OK. We bought her some chicken and she sat there, took bites of the chicken, swallowed it, <laughs> took more bites, swallowed it, ate some fries, swallowed it, ate some more, swallowed it. And we was all just looking at her in amazement, thinking, wow, 
She's never swallowed food like this before, ever. Chicken nuggets, chips, fizzy drink, cake, ice cream. I mean, anyone who'd been on a fast for that long and suddenly ate that amount of food would be ill, right? <laughs> And every food group possible that could cause any sort of reaction, we tested in that first couple of hours, I think. But she just stuffed it all in and was just still grinning and running around, bouncing around the restaurant. And by now, I mean, well over an hour had passed. There was no sign of her flaking out on the floor. And normally, uh, the hour would be up, she'd be on the floor, she'd be ready to be plugged in, back into her energy supply, if you like. She was bouncing off the walls in the restaurant. So I phoned her up and that's when I discovered that they'd gone to um, Caris Bible College to the conference and Andrew had prayed over her, Hannah and she'd been healed. And I was just absolutely amazed. I just sat and cried. She said, Hannah's healed. I had this phone call, she said, Hannah's healed. And I said, sorry. She said, Hannah's healed and I couldn't take it on. She said, Hannah is healed. I said, what has happened? She got this phone call from Carly. She went to this Andrew Rowan and um, people laid hands on her and she's healed. And I said, what do you mean she's healed? She's healed, she's healed. And uh, we were just jumping, jumping, jumping for joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we went back to the conference because there was one more meeting in the evening. We'd heard this little cough and we were kind of like, oh no, what's going to happen next? For the first time she just started to choke, as if she was going to throw everything up and be sick, like she would have done sometimes in the past. The boys were so used to her being sick when they had that little cough, they'd run, run away, sick on me mummy, sick on me, and just leg it because they thought they were going to get covered in puke. She just started to choke and straight away I remembered the teaching, you know, don't, don't beg God to stop it, just, just command and I said to her, I said, choking, stop in Jesus' name. She stopped choking, and that was that. And then it happened again in the car on the way home. That night, it, it happened again. And, uh, and again, Ashley spoke over her, and she was, she was perfectly, perfectly right as rain, instantaneously. But I know that if we hadn't have had that grounding, if we hadn't had that teaching in our heart, we, were kind of, we wouldn't have known what to do. And so when the symptoms came back, we would have just thought, oh, too good to be true. You know, and before you know it, full-blown manifestation of the disease would have been upon her. You know, but because we'd had that grounding, we'd had those, those weeks of teaching, where we got the word in our heart, we guarded our heart, we knew that we weren't going to let Satan rob her of her healing. He might try, but he wasn't going to win. And from that day, she's never had um, any medication, <laughs> she's never had any formula of food through a tube, she's never had any uh, doctor's treatment, um, she's off all her medication, um, she's never been ill since then. And she just was happy, totally different child. <laughs> happy little girl, just running around. She's still running around. She's still eating. She's still busy, 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 always getting into everything. So, so you know, she, she <laughs> became the child she was always meant to be. Well, I've got a, a text message here that Ashley sent to me. Praise God. Hannah was healed yesterday lunchtime. She's been eating like a trooper since. KFC, sweets, yogurts, crisps, cheese, chocolate spread sandwiches with no problems. She has been healed. Make no mistake, Jesus has healed her 100%, just like the word tells us so. 1 Peter 2.24. Glory to God. But I believe until, I, until you actually experience a miracle close to you, um, like happens with Hannah, you can't really say, well, personally, I couldn't really say, yes, miracles do happen. And so I can say, <laughs> miracles do happen. Um, but when we went back to the hospital to have the tube taken out, um, they did all sorts of examinations and blood tests and things. And the unusual thing with Hannah was, aside from this rare disease, she also had a blood clotting disease. We didn't find out this out until she had her first surgery to put the tube in. Um, but it's a very rare blood clotting disease that only one in maybe one or two million children have. Um, and they did a whole battery of blood tests. They came back with these blood tests and they couldn't find it. That had gone too. So we're like, praise the Lord. But we had, all these, we had all our best arguments ready that if they were to come with these bad results, 
because we just kind of expected them to come out with bad results because they just always did. We were just ready to hammer them with a word and say, no, we're not having that. Just ready to, any, any little word from the doctor that was negative, we weren't having it spoken over our daughter. We were about to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we were like, right, they're ready. And they just examined her and the doctor, I mean, I've worked in the medical profession and never in my career have I seen anything like this. The doctor looked at Hannah, looked at these test results and just physically stepped back and looked at her and she said, you're perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. And Hannah just smiled at the doctors and said, I know I'm perfect. Um, so they just said she was perfect then, which was great. And um, they, they gave a general anaesthetic, they removed the tube and uh, she came to and she's absolutely fine. And she's been fine since. Hannah's bedroom. Um, these are all her things. Oh, here he is. Here's the dog who had a tube in his tummy. I don't know if he has. He bears the scars of it. It kind of went in, went in there. That's where a doggy had a little tube in his tummy, and then he got healed too. <laughs> now, when Hannah was sick, she used to insist on praying for herself at bedtime. Most of our boys, um, they like to us as parents to pray for them and, and pray that they don't have any bad dreams at night. But before Hannah was healed, when she was still really, really sick, she used to insist on praying for herself. And every night she'd pray the same prayer. She'd just thank Jesus that he loved her and that he had made her better. Yeah. This is before she was healed. So she had a revelation on healing way before we did. We hope that you've been encouraged by Hannah's miracle. It has certainly changed everyone in the Teradez family. After Hannah's healing, Ashley and Carly sold their home and moved to Walsall to become part of Kira's Bible College, where they could absorb more of the teaching that made all the difference for Hannah. The next year, grandparents from both sides of the family sold homes and businesses to do the same. Today, all of them attend CBC. Of course, a special thank you is due to the partners of Andrew Womack Ministries who gave extra so that this teaching could be made available free of charge to people in need. We thank you. And in her own special way, Hannah thanks you. Was that amazing? I know I've listened to it before, but it's just, it's more amazing. What does the word do? You get in agreement and look what happens. And now when we were uh, in Chicago, Andrew had said that Carly, uh, Hannah is married and she just had a baby. You know, so they're very happy. And um, I think that's pretty cool. And look at all over the world, this testimony has gone. And it has encouraged other people and other people. There are several of them that I know that have done testimonies, that have had testimonies that are credited to seeing this healing. Isn't that amazing how you can be ill like that and then all of a sudden rise up and you go and eat all that food? And did the devil try to come back? Yes. yes, it did. But they knew what to do, didn't they? Yes. See, that's why we have to be on our game plan, don't we? Yes. So what did you get from that, Missy? You know, <clears throat> I think for me, uh, what I tell a lot of my friends and my family is, know who you are. And when I first tell them, I remember telling my sister, know who you are in Christ. Yeah. When she started really getting into the Word, and she said, you know what, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, as soon as I figure this out, I'll come back to you. And she came back, and over time, she's learned to watch her words, learned to declare over her family, ask for the things that she knows that she wants, that God, in God's will. And, and I, don't, 
I think people just really need to know that we are so loved that we can get anything mm -hmm. in his will. And to me, that's what I think people miss, that they're like, well, you mm -hmm. know, maybe you can get healed. I don't know if it'll be me. And, and I think as I grow more in that revelation, it's just like, why not me? Why should it be me? Why should it be you and you and you? Amen. We have to, but we got to know. We have to know what's in there. Yes. Before you can, before you can ask for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could have, I could have a little scoop of ice cream, or I could have the whole Sunday. I could have the whole <laughs> store, and I want the whole store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think when people understand mm -hmm. who they're dealing with, we're dealing with the God Almighty. I yeah. mean, He made this. Well, like Andrew said, that whole thing. Well, it's not. It's nothing bad, you know. It's nothing for Jesus to heal her. Mm -hmm. He made this whole world. A little sickness. That's nothing. 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 Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah, absolutely. But almost makes me cry every time I see it. Though. Okay. What else <laughs> did you get? I mean, look at these oh. sicknesses here. Uh, no fear. Uh, yeah. No fear. You know, you, I think when you get to the end of your rope, there's, uh, you know, I think you tie a knot. And sometimes tying a knot is to tie it right with God. Mm -hmm. You know, because once you get in there, it's like, all right, I'm, I am done feeling bad. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. And take, take charge. That's what, we have dominion. He right. gave us this. So why wouldn't we take charge? And she didn't cave into death. Mm -hmm. No, she just never considered it. And she never cried. No. Until she was healed. When she started to tell it, she knew it was there. She mm -hmm. knew it was coming. I know, and we'll go back to this a little bit, but I know like Carly, I don't know what happened to her, but she has another testimony where she ended up in a wheelchair. She couldn't walk, and she would play tennis with friends. Well, here she is. And she made up her mind she was going to get out of that wheelchair and go down the steps and walk where they were pay playing tennis. So she was able to get herself out of the wheelchair. And the amount of time was just, oh, my goodness, I couldn't believe it. She had to just shuffle along just to get down the steps. I, I thought it was almost an hour. And she got out on the road, and she just kept on. By the time she got to the tennis game, she played. Amen. She is not, you know, she's little and everything, but boy, is she a feisty little girl. She won't give in to the devil. She don't mess with him, does she? She just puts him in his place. Mm -hmm. Now, who else? Who else has something they would like to share? That's something that stuck out to you. Allergies, um, autoimmune. Wow, can you imagine we have people that are on medications for such a long time and they end up dying early? Don't have to do that. Yeah. So what did you write down? Where's the microphone? I, I guess the first thing that stuck out was there was a tape from 1999 that was in a drawer. It was in a drawer that was stuck right there until someone got that seed out and then started to use it. Mm -hmm. And the moment they started using the word, that dormant seed became it became like a the sword. It became active, it became powerful, and it started to work on their behalf. But it was laying there all that time. But then all of a sudden, and look at all the fruit. Whoever sowed that seed into that person, look at the fruit. It wasn't just for Hannah. It was for her parents that now went to Kara's college, got to learn, learn more about the word. For her grandparents that sold their house and also got to hear the word. So whatever seed you plant is never in vain. It's, no. It, it, we'll you don't know when void. it's going to be right. pick, picked up. You know, and that consistency, mm -hmm. once they started the battle, can you, that formula, the cost of the formula, and they weren't wealthy. They were not wealthy. Now they are. Okay. There's, there's that distraction that happens, though, in your life. You know, sometimes 
you know, you get so involved with being the caretaker or being cared for that you don't have time sometimes, or you do have time, mm -hmm. but you get taken away. Well, I have to do this, this, and this before I can sit down and read the word, where she just put it in her ears, and when she was laying there with Hannah, she was just feeding on that word, listening mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. over and over. You know. And she still needed that point of contact, though, with um, Andrew Womack, yeah. so that, what was it, a day? What? It was three, but... A whole, well, I, I just know that the conference? The conference. She, they looked it up. The day they looked it up, it was the next, next day, day that That's a God they thing. needed that point of contact. Mm -hmm. They had the word, but they needed something right then. Mm -hmm. And they know there was someone there, Andrew Womack, with, that knew the word of God, that knew how to use it, that sh they were able to go there and get that total healing right then because she needed it right then. She needed mm -hmm. it. She, it wasn't like... She needed to wait. Yeah, they needed a miracle. They needed it then. And the fact that, you know, she was able to totally get healed. Like, I, I understand, like Michael Schultz, it took some time. But that happened immediately. Mm -hmm. I like that, too. <laughs> I like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Does this kind of remind you of the woman with the issue of blood? Mm -hmm. She had to go and get in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? They had to go to this conference, and they had to get it done now. But think about their heart, the soil of their oh. heart. You know, mm -hmm. they had been in there, you know, churning up that garden, just turning it, turning it, like yeah. thinking about it, knowing about it. So when they came, those seeds were all planted there. They just watered it. Jesus mm -hmm. just touched her. They already had it in their brain, mm -hmm. and they knew the word. And they were ready for it. Now, who healed? Was it the parents that healed, that received that healing? Was it their faith? Or was it Andrew's? Well, How about the woman, the, uh, uh, the woman with the issue of blood? That was her faith. It was their faith that drew that out of Andrew. Okay, they needed that point of contact, but it was their faith that did that. Okay, that's, that's... And to keep it. And to keep yeah. it. Yeah. Because, because symptoms came back. came back. But they they had enough word in them then that they knew how to keep it. Yes. And did you notice how spending time in that word, like you said before, that time in that word, just keep on working it and working it. And they answered it immediately. When it's <clears throat> that couple of coughs, the kids are running, and they were like, no. Right. They answered it immediately. Don't yeah. sit and wait on it. That's that's one of the things I've learned too. It's immediate. I got a pain. Oh, get get it off me. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's the same thing. Like when you're raising kids, I know with our kids mm -hmm. that, and the last two were eleven months apart. I'm telling you, they could get in the darndest thing. Kim, she could scale anything. She could just <laughs> scale anything. Twice I had to have her stomach pumped because she got into poison that was way up. How can you do that? Right? But, and some days you felt like, oh, Lord, when does this all stop? But we made it through. Now, if I had Jesus, but the, my kids knew that I could just give them a look and they better shape up or I'm going to ship them out. You know, and Dee Dee was there. She knew how my household ran. But they were happy kids. They were happy. I didn't have kids sprawled out all the way hmm? or all over the place. So now looking at, at these things, um, uh, she, he just had a short prayer. Now, do you realize Jesus' prayers were short? Mm -hmm. But when, like when I ministered to Dee Dee, when I ministered to other people, you know, uh, what you do is you have to build them up. You have to give them something to chew on if they haven't been there. Now, you see, with this here, Carly and her husband, okay, Ashley, they were both healthy. So it wasn't they that had to do the fighting. Now, when you get somebody that they have to fight, actually, you know, when, you, when I look at Tracy and Kyle, and I look at Kyle wasn't, able to join in on the game we were playing. So Tracy, 
I agree. I agree. When she agreed, it was done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's done. But the biggest thing, and like you said before, the fear. You know, and they come in and they tell you, now he's got pneumonia. His kidneys just set down, shut down. His bowels aren't working. You know, and, and so on like that. And you go, no, you don't. You say, oh, no, devil, not today. Because you knew that when you spoke the word and that person came in agreement, so Tracy did the, she, her faith took it. Yeah. Her faith took it. Right? But if, if, if like Kyle, you, you know, he didn't know what was going on, like I said. But when you're sitting with a friend, let's say I'm, I'm, you're agreeing with me, and you take it, you're, you're, you can understand, you've got an agreement. You've got an agreement. If they say, I agree with you, you got it. You got it. That's all it takes. And that agreement binds both of you together, all right, in a covenant, and that covenant is promised to come to pass. And then you plead the blood of Jesus. When you say, I plead the blood of Jesus, you know what you do? You're taking the blood of Jesus and you're throwing it all over the devil. He hates that. He hates the blood. Yes, be bold. Yeah. Be bold in pushing that back. Yep. When you know what, what you've got, your covenant, you don't give up. You just don't give up. Anybody have anything to say? No? That was good, though, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you see how we need to grab onto these and learn from this? Because once you get, you, you, you stay right up here. You don't, Satan's down here. You don't ever go under him by getting into fear. And if you do fear, don't. Remember I taught that a long time ago. Don't let the devil see you sweat. <laughs> no, no. Fake it until you make it then. You know, I ain't going to put up with this. No, no. And the minute you do that, you're right back on, <laughs> on that ball game. You're right back onto it, you know. But it, it, I could have went into Kyle's room, you know, when Tracy wasn't there and things, but he would be praying in the spirit. You know, I came in and I'm doing Psalms 91 and, you know, kind of singing and having fun. The devil shouldn't have done that. These people got born again, and they got praying in the spirit. But you were bold in what you were talking. Everybody knew on that floor, probably in that hospital, what they was did. happening up there. Well, they said people on other floors were wondering what was going on up there. But that was the word that was going on, mm -hmm. and he was using us. Is God good? All the time. See, you don't give up. That's why God is saying, and Julie Green right now, it is so important that we latch ourselves onto the word of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do you ever see those little green things with the little suckers on their feet and they latch themselves onto stuff? Well, you know what an octopus does. Mm -hmm. You know how they latch? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have one of those little things you put in, you, you stick to the tub or you stick mm -hmm. to something? Yeah. Yeah. You take your kids and you stick them right on with you and take them right with you. Amen. You do. Amen. Because you never know, you get, you get in, a, you get in a, a bad place, those kids will fight for you. Mm -hmm. They'll fight for you. Got it? Yeah. So, do you agree? Amen. Okay, I was going to read some of this here, but, or have um, Dee read it, but we don't have time for that. I think this is really important. But do you have something to say, Kenny? I go back and look at this uh, tape originally. And um, <clears throat> it all started from somebody sewing that tape into Ashley yeah. mm -hmm. and, and Carly. Yeah, thank and so you. So sometimes we think, oh, I sewed this tape in, and it really ain't going to do anything, or it doesn't do nothing. But we never know That's when right. we sew a tape That's right. or we pray for somebody. It may not happen right away, but we are sowing a seed and we need to remember there's, there will be a harvest. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and so um, <clears throat> just think, if somebody hadn't sewn that tape, yeah. you know, it, they would have never got their miracle. They never got their miracle. So a seed sewing. 
Amen. Yeah. That's awesome. You know what? You even give out one of our cards. You give out one of our, our uh, church cards with that mm -hmm. salvation message on the back. Or let's say you sow something into somebody. You sow money into them. You know, you go back and you, you, you call that in. Lord, I sowed money into a person. Now I'm calling that in. I'm calling it in. See, you have got it laid up in heaven. Several of you have sown into me. You got that coming back to you. Amen. It's the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. I always get what I want. So what we're going to do, anybody else? Okay. Um, where is it? Here. We'll pass this around if anybody wants to. Remember, you can do whatever you want. It's up to you. I, I really was impressed that after they prayed, they went away, and um, she's healed, and she's eating all that stuff. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I would have sat there and went, don't eat that. You might not, you know. They didn't think about that. Just I left that was her. an Just interesting choice. Interesting choice, absolutely. <clears throat> Where they Pastor went. Kenny, you want to pray over that, dear? Heavenly Father, yes. we praise you. We yes. thank you, Father. Yes. Father, we thank you for these seeds that were sown tonight. Yes. And Father, your word says when a seed is sown, we can expect the harvest. Yes. So, Father, we're expecting tonight, and we just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Now, let's do communion. That's, it's, uh, we're just a few minutes over, but we want to do communion. Why? Because you can kick the devil's butt with communion. Amen. You take communion, okay? You, really, seriously. And you get somebody to do it with you. They can't swallow, but you can put a little on their tongue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And take some of these along when you go places. And um, get it done. Because this is your proof of your covenant. Amen. This mm -hmm. is the proof of your covenant, right? Yes. Right here, his body was broken. <laughs> so we could be fixed, see that? Amen. So we could be whole. Hmm. So let's eat. Mm -mm -mm. Now, and the blood, see the blood. Even, remember, they put, they put the lamb's blood on the doorpost. How much more powerful is the blood of Jesus? Amen. Every once in a while, just say, I plead the blood of Jesus over that sick person. Or I, plead, I plead it over my grandkids. Amen. I plead it over certain, I just, <clears throat> like all of you spiritual children, I just get real nasty with the devil. A woman can, you guys, there's two of you in here, uh, do you know women can really get nasty? We're fighters, right? <laughs> I'm a fighter. Don't want to get me mad, Satan, right? But the blood, this is your covenant rights. You're the righteousness of God. You have a right to take that word, and everyone you pray for is healed, set free, prosperous, peace, love, and joy in Jesus' name. Mm -mm -mm. God is good. All the time. All the time. Father, we give you the glory and the honor. You are so good. Amen. You are so precious to us. I love you and I thank you. Oh, God, you're good. So do that. Set yourself in agreement with people. But remember, it's their faith that's going to take it. But you, you can see, Jerry Savelle said this. Lord, as a favor to me. I just got out his book, Favor. There's favor in this house. You can say, do this for favor for me. You just sowed into me in Chicago. You have a right to it. You have a right to it. Got it? You never know when somebody's going to call on you and say, wait a minute, I got seed in the bank of heaven. Give it to me in Jesus' name. It belongs to us. You think? Now, Father, we thank you and we give you the glory. You are holy. There's no one like you, Daddy. And I thank you, and I do. I plead the blood of Jesus over each one of you, over your families, over your workplace, over your neighborhoods, 
over your marriages, over your children, your children's children. In Jesus' name, do you agree? Amen. Good. That'll make them little grandkids and, 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 and your own children. Stop them in their tracks when they try to do something wrong. Amen. Got, it? Got it? God bless you. Have a wonderful night. What's left of it?